So let's talk about annuity dues. So we have a timeline. And so let's say we have an annuity due of n payments. So how is an annuity due different from an annuity immediate? So for an annuity immediate for, of n payments, all the payments happen at the end of each period. So we have a payment at the end of each year. So for an annuity due, it differs from an annuity immediate in the way that the payments actually happen at the beginning of each period. So for annuity due, the payments happen at time 1, time 2, all the way to time n. But for annuity due, the payments start at time 0 and then end at time n minus 1. So the first logical question to ask is, what is the present value of an annuity due? So again, like the annuity immediate, we have a special symbol for this. So for annuity immediate, it's equal to a n. And for annuity due, we add two dots to signify that the payments happen at the beginning of each, each period. So what is this equal to? So again, we can just use the geometric series formula all the way to phi to the power of n minus 1. So this is the payment at time 0, the payment at time 1, the payment at time 2, all the way to the payment at time n minus 1. So we'll use the geometric series formula. So the first term is equal to 1. The common ratio is equal to v. We have n terms divided by 1 minus the common ratio. So let's multiply the numerator and the denominator by 1 plus i. So always keep in mind that v times 1 plus i is equal to 1 because you discount it and then you compound your money, so you get back 1. So in our denominator, we have 1 plus i minus 1. And so you see that we have i in the denominator, and I'm going to bring this 1 plus i down to the bottom. So i divided by 1 plus i. And if you if you remember the relationship between these the uh, interest symbols, you know that i divided by 1 plus i is actually equal to the rate of discount. So the annuity due, the present value of the annuity due is equal to 1 minus v to the power of n divided by d. So there we have it, that's our formula. So notice that this formula that we've just derived is very similar to the annuity immediate formula. So for annuity immediate, it's equal to this. So the next logical question to ask is to find the accumulated value. And then recall that in the, pre in the previous video, I told you that the accumulated value of an annuity immediate is equal to 1 plus i to the power of n times the present value of the annuity. And this same relationship holds, because just notice that a n is actually the value of all those payments at time 0, and if you want to evaluate them at time n, all you have to do is just compound the value you have at time 0 by 1 plus i to the power of n. So this is how we got our, relate, uh, got our formula. So by the same logic, the accumulated value of our annuity due is actually equal to 1 plus i to the power of n times a double dot n. So I'm not going to prove this rigorously. So if you want to, you can you can use the geometric series argument again yourself. But uh, writing out the formulas, you'll see that the accumulated value is equal to 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 divided by d. And again, this is very similar to the annuity immediate formula. So recall that for the annuity immediate, the, the accumulated value is equal to this. So you see that both formulas are almost identical, except for the de de except for the denominator. So the third thing I'd like to do is to find a relationship between a n and a double dot n. And this is useful when you want to convert from one one symbol to the other. So this uh, happens quite frequently in your exams. So let's try doing that. So recall just now we found that the formula for annuity due is equal to one minus v to the power of n divided by d. And then I'm going to go back one step. So remember in our proof, just now with the geometric series, we went to this step, and then we jumped to this step. So now I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to this step. And so if you notice, I can actually take the 1 plus i in the denominator, flip it up upwards. And then you'll see that this is just the present value of an annuity immediate. So 1 plus i times an. 
So there we have it. This is our relationship. So a double dot n is equal to 1 plus i times a n. So this formula uh, can come in handy in, in your exams. So this is worth remembering. So another thing I want to do is that the relationship that we established just now, so this relationship, this is sort of like a product relationship. So we multiply a n by something to get a double dot n. So is there are some relationship, relationship that uh, kind of if I add something to this term, I'll get the a double dot term. So just now it's our product relationship. So I want to find something that's in the form of a sum relationship. So how do I do that? And so first of all, let us observe the payment of an annuity due. So for a given annuity due, so we have payments at the beginning of each period. And then notice that if we ignore this initial payment, if we just look at all these payments here, all these payments, the present value of all these payments, ignore the first term, that's equal to a at minus 1, right? Because if you ignore the first term, it's just a series of n minus 1 payments happening at the end of each period. So this is just annuity immediate. And so if we add back the original term at the beginning, at 1, we get back our annuity due, so the entire payment. And so there we have it. This is our relationship, our sum relationship. And so uh, I'd say that this formula is more useful, but uh, it's important that you understand how this was uh, derived. So the kind of thinking that, it, that was involved in this sort of proof can come in handy when you're trying to uh, analyze different payment uh, problems in your FM exam. So uh, this is also worth knowing. And so if you and also if you don't believe me, you can actually just prove that this relationship is true. So it's just a little bit of a little bit of algebra. So just add those terms together, and I'm gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator by v. So multiply the numerator by v and the denominator. So on top we get one minus. Oh wait, this is n minus one. Sorry. So minus 1. So on the top, we get 1 minus v to the power of n. And at the bottom, we get vi. Well, don't forget vi is actually, actually just i divided by 1 plus i, which is equal to d. So we get 1 minus vn divided by d, which is, as we've shown, the present value of the annuity due. And so there we have it. This is sort of like a numerical proof of the formula that I just established. So there you have it. Yeah, so I hope this helped. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.